board and okay. to no, 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 cancel. Uh, let's do light. All right, troops. Well, let's uh, let's get rolling here. We'll share up the screen. <laughs> oh man, I just did that. And what did we lose? Ace. I guess we lost Ace. Ace wasn't able to hear us this morning. So, all right. Well, we'll do this for the record. Third Sunday after Easter, mm -hmm. we uh, get to go back into Luke. Uh, it's interesting in Easter you have you go to a one-year lectionary, <laughs> kind of. On Easter Sunday you do Matthew, Mark, or Luke, whatever gospel you're in. But the second Sunday of Easter is always the 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 text with John and Thomas. Um, and then usually the third Sunday of Easter, I'm pretty sure is always a Maya story, but I'm not sure. I can't say that for sure. But um, uh, yeah, so now even though we're in the year of Matthew, um, we, we go to Luke here because it's such an endearing, awesome story. So we've got this and then a passage from Acts, which is really helpful. And good so we'll start with the Luke text and then we'll maybe shoot to some of the supporting passages we are gonna go to um, let's see we're gonna start at verse 13 so anybody want to take that big paragraph there to 27 Sure. All right, Ross. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And, and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to, to death and have, him, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they also had seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. They said unto, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ross. You're getting pretty good at that, King James. Yeah, <laughs> Three score four. <laughs> You're getting pretty good at it. Um, yeah. Uh, how about the rest? Uh, 28 through 35. Anybody I got else? you now. I got you now, Bill. Oh, super ace. I'm glad you can hear us now. Awesome. I can. Okay, Kim. <clears throat> So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. 
when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened us to the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, just that's where our text ends for this Sunday. Um, because you got to stop somewhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. But something that um, when I studied this with Kim and tech study and Paula yesterday, and then in our staff, um, listened to some folks talking about this passage. Uh, it, because we always stop there, because that's the appointed reading for the third Sunday after Easter. You don't remember you. It's easy to forget that. Jesus, right after that, even though he vanished from their sight, as they were talking about these things. So if I would have been further along in my sermon, I would have included at least verse 36, because um, Jesus comes right back. As they were talking about these things, Jesus stood among them and said, peace to you. Mm -hmm. And then they're frightened, startled, thought they saw a spirit. And so Luke wants it. You know, Jesus shows, just like in John last week, he shows him his hands and his feet. Um, and, you know, even though they say, don't, you know, touch me, he says, you know, in one spot, the Gospels, Jesus says, don't hang on to me or whatever, to, I think, Mary or whatever. But here, it's like, touch me, I'm, I'm flesh and bone. I'm, this is the resurrected Christ. This is not a ghost. Um, and then he eats something with them. So that seems to be a big concern for Luke. And then uh, we go to the really the bottom line in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts, um, verse 47, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses to these things. And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So there's the hold on for, for Pentecost. And then we get the story of ascent, the Ascension, which is where the Acts of the Apostles, the second volume of Luke, picks up. But I just think it's you get the sense that there was, okay, a lot of time between the next appearance and it doesn't. Jesus, while they're talking about, while they're like, gosh, we recognized him. We just, we correct, we had a meal with him, and he's right back. <laughs> he stands right among them. So I, I think that some, I don't know exactly how that's important. I think that's, that's important. So with that as an intro, um, let me say a prayer, and we will see what's striking you in this story. Gracious and loving God, thank you for your word and for the word about the resurrection. And so we pray that indeed our time together will be fruitful and helpful for our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Yeah, so what, uh, what jumps out at you here? I wish that there were a story about the Lord appearing to Simon. And is Simon Peter? Yeah. Um, is there a story where Jesus appears to Simon? There is. I'm trying to think if there's a, more. So in the Gospel of John, after we had that text last week, you know, all these things have been done. So if you go to verse 30 of chapter 20 in the Gospel of John, we, uh, we jump in the Gospel of John to chapter 21. And some scholars think this is like an addition to 
the Gospel of John because it seems like it ends in chapter 20 with verse 31 where it says, you know, but these are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name, the end. But no, not yet. <laughs> and so we get this addition, um, and Jesus reveals himself again to the disciples by the T C Sea of Tiberias. Um, and there it is. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel and Cain of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And so, you know, Jesus is in the shore. Do you have any fish? Peter realizes it's him. He jumps out. Um, I think this is where he jumps out to meet him and all that. And Jesus says, come, let's have breakfast. And then he says to Peter, do you love me more than these in verse 15? So that's, I think... Carrie, that's the appearance to Peter that I know we hear about. But you are you're referring to this one where the women say, let's see. Because Peter finds the absence. He doesn't find Jesus. Yeah, originally when in the Gospel of John, he goes there. The beloved disciple beats him to the tomb and you know he hears from the women but he he one. sees the empty tomb um and yes this one this one we don't hear that let's see but let's see right the first right above that says that he went to the tomb peter rose and ran to the tomb stooping and looking and he saw the linen cloths by themselves and he went home marveling at what had ha happened Yeah. If this was the the evening of the uh, first day. Yes. This is in the Gospel of Luke. This is the evening of the first day, whereas like the story we heard last week with Thomas, you know, it's eight days after that he comes to Thomas. This is where you've got some differences in the. Um, You've definitely got some differences in the Gospels, you know. Um, I think in Matthew, does it even have Jesus appearing? G Matthew, I think it's, he, he only appears to the disciples in Galilee. You don't hear anything about an appearance in Jerusalem, like in, in John. So this is a spot where you get some differences, but then you also get some very s similar you know, tellings, you know, the showing of the hands and the feet, the, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities as well, but there are differences in order. And a lot of people, you know, are perplexed by that for sure, understandably. So, um, I wanted to zero in on when, when you said, but when you, Carrie, when you asked about, did, did we answer that question? Um, or you, you said you wish he would appear to Simon Peter or? Yeah, I'd like to know when he appeared to Simon. When he did it. Yeah. Yeah, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 that he, in that um, um, creed that Right. Paul writes that he appeared to Cephas and then, then to the 12 and then to 500. So he's probably talking about Pentecost there. Yes. But Paul specifically mentions Peter. Uh -huh. Ah, and they said, and so Peter, yeah, Luke is very clear. He did not see. So, um, this this passage in in john would have been a week or so so the one i just read from john that would have been after the the uh appearance of jesus to the disciples after eight days um, a lot of people say well that's the eighth day that's the you know that that's not a literal day 
because that causes problems. <laughs> um, or it can kind of cause problems, but it would have been a week or so, Carrie, after the initial resurrection that he actually, that Peter saw him for the first time. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, they it says they, they went back, Cleopas and whoever he was with, went back to Jerusalem and with, with the 11 there. And, and that's, that, that's when he says, that's true. So, would we assume Peter was there and saw that? Well, I, it says the eleven. And, that's... and they were talking about these things. So, and they told what happened on the road. The Lord is risen. Let's see. And they found the eleven. Those who were with them gathered there. Thank you, Ross. That's right. They found the eleven. Those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. I got your question now, Carrie. I wasn't following. When did, we didn't hear about that in Luke, did we? Oh, you guys ask these questions that I don't even think about. Let's see what we got. What verse is that? 34. 34, okay. Okay. There we go. These verses summarize the story at the same time that they bring the focus back to Jerusalem. The mention of the 12, of the 11, indicates the absence of Judas and demonstrates that neither Cleopas nor his companion was one of the 12 apostles. The appearance to Simon was an event which was a crucial aspect of the earliest recitations of resurrection appearances. So that's the passage Kim quoted, because we would assume that Paul's word in 1 Corinthians 15 is actually earlier than the writing of the Gospels. So this that's where this commentary is saying the fact that Jesus appeared to Simon, to Peter, it is a part of the ancient oral story. And, and Luke and Paul were real close. And Luke and Paul were close. So Luke puts that in there at this point, um, even though I don't think he's told us how about that yet right no okay so like i say i get why carrie you're asking that although luke only mentions it without telling the story the report of the women of the empty tomb was not believed but now this story is related to the 11 along with the appearance of simon um will it be believed will it be understood luke moves quickly into the final appearance story which is the um you know, the one I kind of went on and read. So interesting. So we have to go to John. <laughs> but John's appearance, the appearance, the thing out at the lake was way after Luke's, you know, uh, chronology, I guess you could say. Yeah, and this is where a lot of people I'm certainly not suggesting this is a struggle for you, Carrie, but um, a lot of people see the differences, you know, in the resurrection stories as a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I see them as, a, as validity of the truth of the matter. Um, you know, I've said this many times, uh, right? You remember me talking about how police officers or detectives when they interview people about an accident or a crime and everybody's test everybody's perspective is exact they know there's collusion that's right nobody, nobody remembers something the exactly same. the same and so the fact that there's some differences actually goes to its credibility more than it's um than taking away from it in my view um but yeah yeah, well, the, the gospel writers all heard these. I mean, they, they, they took it from oral history, wrote, wrote down what 
Right, from, especially from Luke and Paul. You know, I guess the the tradition is that John and Matthew and Mark, well, may have actually been you know followers of Jesus. But yeah, and it's in interesting how Ross's Bible and my Bible are so different in explaining things. The <laughs> I can follow, but uh, this is all seems like it's all he's his is old English and mine is oh yeah, um, yeah. modern yeah whatever it's yeah written, yes you know. yeah the King J the King James is written in Something and the thous and the these yes, and the exactly. wherefores and and it's in the, the King's English you know yeah. way back when the way they said that to so each other is funny and yeah. well they commune together in reason. They commune together and in the, reason. The next verse was, but their eyes were holden uh, that they should not know him. Yeah. Right. Their eyes were holden. Yeah. So in other words, what does that mean? They couldn't see him. <laughs> they were kept. They were kept from seeing him. So yeah, Karen, that's yeah. why we have more modern translations because people we don't speak that way. We yeah. don't. We people don't know what that we. It yeah. Better. People don't understand it. Yeah. And uh, the other reason we have newer translations is the King James Bible had very limited manuscripts compared to what we have now. Mm -hmm. We have way better, older, more dependable manuscripts than they had when they translated the King James. But still, even with that, you know you're reading the same Bible. You know you're yeah. reading the same verse. It's so. Um, but yeah, when, uh, there are some people I know, and again, it's some churches and stuff that's like King James only. That it's like that translation was divinely inspired, you know. Mm. And so, you know, all these modern translations they reject out of hand. Like even the NIV or the ESV, the Revised Standard Version, they say those are all biased and corrupt, and and I I just have never. Um, I why this chair is not soft. Is this chair? <laughs> they should be the same, but I don't want the soft one. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so much better. Um, so uh, yeah, so that is a thing, you know. That that's a whole other. Well, they're using more modern language of today. Yeah, yeah. Which in, in the you want? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's one reason, by the way, we have a different version of the Lord's Prayer. It's not the only reason, you know, when oh, we say, yeah. instead of our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, we, um, the, the other version is our Father in heaven, um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We still use hallowed, your kingdom come, your will come, yeah. thys, you use the yeah. yours instead of thys, because we don't say thys today. Um, but again, that the the uh, the thighs are so much a part of our culture that we, we every time I use the more modern Lord's Prayer, I hear about it, <laughs> and like, not in a good way. I like way. the old version. Yeah, that's ex what I learned exactly. Yeah, over right. That's what child, we all learned, so. and that. Yep. The what was one that was actually said? What's that, Ace? What, <clears throat> which one was the one that was actually said? Well, he would have spoken in Aramaic or a or a dialect of Hebrew. So, the what we have is uh, from the Gospels is a translation into Greek. So, so he would have said it in Aramaic. I think. Um, I don't know if it's in the Chosen or in the. The Passion of the Christ, or somewhere on the internet, if you Google it, you can hear the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic. You can hear what it would have sounded like. I've heard some, I've heard it done. So, so yeah, he, so it, he, you know, Hallowed, you know, Thy Kingdom Come, those are all just translations into English. But mm -hmm. when we memorize a translate, you know, it's, it's hard to deviate from that, you know. When I visit with somebody who has, dementia or all severe alzheimer's i break into the lord's prayer they might they not even, know it. yeah yep. yeah I'm, they might not know who i am but they they the launch into the lord's prayer so mm -hmm. we don't want to mess with that <laughs> too much but 
here's the deal. I've got the Lord's Prayer memorized in two versions now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's what's wrong with that knowing it in two versions, you know? Uh, there are some, there's a couple phrases that it's a struggle on how to translate them. And uh, the newer version, which by the way is actually older than the one that we consider the old version. Um, <laughs> But the newer one, instead of saying, lead us not into temptation, it says, save us from the time of trial. Yeah. Which actually is more, I think, accurate. Um, yeah. But, and it has to do with how it got translated in the Latin and, you know, all of this stuff. So, so that's, a, that's, that's a plus to the newer, actually older <laughs> uh, version. But anyway, sorry, I don't know how we got on all that. But uh, yeah. You know, the other thing that's funny about this, where Peter... We don't even see where Peter actually saw Jesus. Yeah. But they note it here. They didn't believe the women who actually saw Jesus. There you go. <laughs> no, because they were just women. Because they were women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I, I, we don't want to pass over that without reaffirming that in all the Gospels, women were the first carriers of the good news. Mm -hmm. Now, some people make a big deal that Paul leaves them out in his first Corinthians 15 uh, telling, you know, first he appeared to this person, then Simon, and then, then to 500. Well, they're, they're clearly in that 500, <laughs> but he says that he appeared to 500 at one time. We don't hear anything about that story in any of the four gospels. Um, and Paul leaves them out. And that's like, why, why did, why didn't he? Well, Paul is trying to, he is, if you look at the way, that formula, it's just like you would list witnesses in a court of law. Like, who are the witnesses that are going to come? That, and, and were women allowed to testify in the court? No. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why he leaves them out, is because not that he didn't value their view or whatever. I think when you look at the way he talks about other women, Clearly, he valued them and ministry and trusted them. In fact, he sends Phoebe uh, with the, letter, the epistle of Romans to the church in Rome. <laughs> you know, if you didn't trust, if you had issues with women, you probably wouldn't, you know, entrust your longest, most important letter. <laughs> so I think it's cool how Phoebe is the the bringer of the letter of Romans to Rome, just like the women at the tomb were, you know, the first carriers of the good news. So, but I think that's why Paul left them out in 1 Corinthians 15. But they're in all the other gospels. And, uh, but yes, unfortunately, women in Jesus's day could not testify in a court of law. If a woman mm -hmm. saw a murder happen, it doesn't matter. They, they would not be, their testimony would not be accepted. So, yeah, so the fact that there are women at the right involved, and then finally another example for the legitimacy of these stories, because many people dismiss them. You shouldn't do that. Many people dismiss them as just kind of creations of the evangelists, and that's why they're so different. And all of this. Well, if you were going to make it up, would you have women be the main witnesses? <laughs> you know, if you could, if you were going to make it up from scratch. You wouldn't have women be the in this day and age. No, because it's always been an age of men. That's right. From the beginning. Right. So if you were going to make it up, you wouldn't have women be the main tellers of the story. That's why I say I think that also goes to its historicity. Even while we see that there are differences, how many were there, you know, which ones, you know, um, I think that also goes to its legitimacy. So, all right. Well, let's let's keep digging into this. Um, I mean, what else? You know what I like about out? this. Yeah. What, story, what do you like? Um, yeah. When he had showed him, that, <clears throat> showed the disciples his hands. Yes. Then he says, "Do you have anything to eat around here?" Yeah. <laughs> I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they gave him a piece of fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Yep. Yep. Do you have anything to eat? I'm hungry. It's a typical man thing. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, he gave him a piece. They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Yeah. Yep. Just like in uh, the story of Jairus's daughter, 
he mm. fed, he said, make her something eat. Oh, that's you know, right. Because it shows that they're human, that they yeah. still have. Yeah, yeah, give her something. Oh, I digestion. forgot about that, about about Jairus' daughter. That's the only thing I remember from confirmation. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the pastor pointed that out, and for the longest time I didn't know why. And then it just occurred to me, I think when I was working with the humanity of Jesus, it's like, oh, to show that she was human, yeah. she wasn't a ghost. Yeah, well, I love that too, Karen. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I think I might just read some of it or put it up on the screen on Sunday, I'm not sure. It's just a lot of, it's, it's but it's a part of the story. It's hard not to keep in there, so. That's uh, cool. Part. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else strikes you about the talking on the road to Emmaus and all of that good stuff? Yeah. Well, the other thing I was thinking about after we talked yesterday is the description of who they thought Jesus was. They, they wouldn't have recognized him anyway. Because they're saying he was a prophet, he thought, you know, he was supposed to save us from the Romans, and all this stuff. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, great point. And is this a way of critiquing that view of what redemption was going to look like? I wonder. Maybe that'll be good for our Sunday morning class a mm -hmm. couple of weeks from now. They, that's a good thing that we didn't mm -hmm. talk. About that so far, Kim, that you know, what things concerning Jesus, how our chief priests they had him crucified, but we had hoped, so they had lost hope. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Um, why first Peter 8, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold. That, that's where Peter gets his explanation of the second article, that he redeemed us not with silver and gold, but with his precious blood and whatnot. So, let's see that. And redeemed his people. That's another great, I think, is that Zechariah talking back in chapter one? Um, but what does it mean to be redeemed? And what is that going to look like? Is this a critique of that? Uh, they, that you guys have got it wrong. That's not what redemption, because what are they, what are they saying they are expecting? It, when they say they, we had hoped he would redeem Israel, what would that mean? Kick, kick the Romans out. It, it probably would involve the government. Yeah. And who is in charge? Yeah. Um, and, Carrie, is that what you were going to say? Yeah, I think it. I think it would mean that. In addition to, um, maybe reforming the Jewish system too. Yeah, you know? I think maybe so. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like the, the corruption like the of the chief priests. Yeah, and the, like getting the law right, and, and maybe getting the law right, and yeah. Like, you know, Israel's, the people's, you know, it's always been a problem, the, the, the passivity, I guess you could say, or the apathy of the people, you know, uh, you know, the church always struggles with this, Israel struggles with it, you know, we just want to live our lives, you know, whatever, we don't want to mess with all that religious stuff, you know, I'm sure all of that was meant, but I, I think you'd have to include the the domination of the Romans being, <laughs> you know, removed as well. So, but yeah, so, so what is Jesus saying? Yes, and besides all this, they, you know, and then Jesus says, oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Hey, Kim, there's another heart one. I had, I had thought about the Peter in the second reading or the first reading for Sunday, the people are cut to the heart. And then the disciples have say, didn't our hearts burn within us? But here we got another, we got slow of heart. So my sermon title is heart surgery. 
<laughs> just because I was trying to find something creative. But maybe it's going to really work here. So, so they're slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all, in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. <clears throat> so, um, you know, that's, that's intriguing. What does redemption look like? There are Christians today who say, yeah, redemption for us Gentiles was Jesus dying for our sins and being raised to make us just, but Jesus is still going to redeem Israel proper, that he's going to come back, that Israel as a nation is going to be reconstituted, the temple is going to be reestablished, you know, all of that's going to happen. They're called Christian Zionists. And they, and I'm like, hmm, aren't you guys just falling into the same problem that the disciples have? Because even though they get this, that Jesus is raised from the dead, look what happens in Acts. Let's just go to Acts 1. We're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit, but we kind of have to go there. So um, we get a, we get volume two here, and um, you know Jesus saying, "Hey, hang out in the upper room until the Holy Spirit comes." And then we hear about the ascension, um, and we hear verse six. So they had come together. They asked him, "Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel?" And Jesus doesn't say you guys don't understand it he says it's not for you to know the times and seasons that the father is fixed by his own authority you but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and to all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth so what our zionist christians say is that Jesus didn't say that he wasn't going to give the kingdom back to Israel, whatever that means. He just said it's not now. Yeah, and, and then he says, you are witnesses to all these things. And he told them to stay in the city until they have the power from on high yeah. through Jesus. Right, yeah, through the Holy Spirit, yeah. Holy Spirit. And, and the point of all that is for them to be witnesses from Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So now what I how I read this is that the way God's kingdom is going to be established on earth is through preaching. Is through proclaiming the gospel, which is what the church is all about. I don't for me Bill Crabtree reading scripture. I don't think Israel. I think we're done with Israel as a nation. And I'm not talking about the Jewish people They're They always have the covenants. They have the promises. They have, they have that special place. Paul believes at some point they're going to come back in. But the actual place of a physical nation like Israel, modern day Israel, like that's part of, see a lot of Christians see the establishment of modern Israel as a part of the biblical salvation story. I don't. I, I'm all for Israel being a, existing and being a nation so that the Holocaust never happens again. I'm, I'm all for that as a really important ally of ours in that area of the world. But I don't see b current modern day Israel as being a sign of the biblical. Yeah, and a sign. But again, I just I want you to know that's out there um, and we run into that. I, yeah, a theocracy anymore. right. They're not a theocracy. They're a democracy and a messy mm -hmm. one, just like ours. Yeah. I mean, they can't even, you know, look at their, their. So, yeah, they're not a theocracy. Now, so again, this Christian, you know, you can go, they've got supposedly they, I don't know what organizations have the, all the accoutrements of the temple ready to go. 
You build that temple, they got the golden lampstand made, they got the all the all the stuff ready to go in there. It's just waiting. If they were Christian Zionists, they'd have a reading room, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, I, I don't. A reading room. A reading room. Christian, like Christian Zionists. Oh, Christian. Christian scientists. Scientists. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Uh, there it is. No problem. There it is. We had. We got one. We got one today. That's so good. That's so good. No, I love it. So. So this is the second reading. No, this is just. I just had to go there from. It's Jesus kind of place with them a little bit here because they're saying. You know, he's already restored the kingdom, right, in his death and resurrection. And so instead, he says, you know, you'll receive power uh, and be my witnesses. That's what's really going to happen. Yes. So I'm going to open your eyes. I'm going to yep. you'll get the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then you'll tell everybody that this kingdom's been restored. Yes. Basically. Right. And it has nothing to do has with nothing to do whether with we're in charge the Romans. Uh, or the Romans are uh -huh. in charge. Yeah. yeah. That's the way I read. It. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. I mean, fortunately, it won't. If we're wrong, <laughs> you know, yeah. So he, he uses those words when he's talking. When they, they ask him when the end of the end of time is, as he yes. it's not for you, and you know the, the father yeah. knows what right. else does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so that end of the world stuff, end of history stuff is, you know, don't don't worry about it. <laughs> it's you know only God knows that. But that's but get to work. And start preaching and telling the news. So, yeah. Um, we we've also talked a lot about um, yesterday. I've been really thinking, Kim, about the <laughs> Emmaus. We don't know where it is. You know, um, and some people say that that was intentional um, for as a way to, um, but at least that's what. One of our pastors were saying, let's see here though. Let me just see if Emmaus, destination of two disciples who Jesus traveled from Jerusalem shortly after the resurrection. The village location is disputed. <laughs> mm. um, when the three arrived at Emmaus, the disciples invite Jesus to stay the night. He blesses breaks the bread, recognize him, he vanishes, realizing that, yeah, we got that, location. Researchers, okay, let's do more. Um, researchers have not I definite, definitively identified biblical Emmaus with any ancient site. Two leading suggestions are Nic Nicopolis and Moza. The former is a more popular view, but the second is more likely. Non-biblical sources mention three places with the name Emmaus. So Josephus refers to it twice to a location in Galilee near Tiberias. Mm. So this is the Jewish historian that comes after Jesus. Jo Josephus refers to a different Emmaus in the hill country of Judah. Josephus First Maccabees 3 and 4 and several other sources describe an Emmaus in the Shephelah lowlands. Hmm. So there, that kind of changes that a little bit for me. So there were, we don't know which Emmaus it was, but there, might be three. there were, there were Emmauses if we trust Josephus and the, the, the intertestamental book of the Maccabees. Um, yeah, so it goes on. Anyway, the reason I brought that up is I, you know, when I think about how you preach this and how does this land for you and your life, are we all on a road to Emmaus? You know, are we, you know, is that really, you know, so life is a journey mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes we have grief that's disorientating. And Jesus comes and walks alongside. It really, you know, it's a neat feeling to think Jesus is walking alongside us. How is he doing that? You know, with and how is he opening up the scriptures to us? And how is he preaching for us? 
um, helping us to see, you know, that that has a, you know, it's a way to for us to dive into this story. So, do we find ourselves saying we had hoped, you know, I had hoped that, you know, the Phoenix Suns would someday win an NBA championship. <laughs> I had hoped the Mariners would have a great season. You know, I had hoped that my friend would not die of cancer. I had hoped that, you know, I would get that job or not lose my job. I had hoped that I'd get a better score on the test. I had hoped, I had hoped, you know, we life along this journey has lots of disappointments. And, you know, how, where's the good news for us? Um, and it has something to do with Jesus walking alongside us, coming to us in word and sacrament, even though it's debated whether or not this is a vague reference to the sacrament, you know, like Jesus broke bread and they, you know, is this the Lord's Supper? And some people say, oh, that's, that's Luke's, you know, bringing in the Lord's Supper. Um, I think that's a big question. I don't, I couldn't say that with any confidence, that's for sure. But it, You know, it just strikes me how it says he was revealed through the bread. Though, that yeah, he was revealed in the breaking in the of the bread. Um, which, although it's interesting, yeah, and this is where it's interesting. And this is where I'd love it if it's, if we just think about his word and sacrament. Did not our, so their hearts burned when he opened the scriptures. So, and not just like he took out a Bible, but he taught and preached about him and said, this is the Messiah, look back in Isaiah 53 or look in Psalm 22 or whatever mm -hmm. passages he went to. Or um, that's when their hearts burned, but then, um, and they found the, you know, and but and their eyes were open, they recognized him. And he, let's see, but then it does say that when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were open. So their hearts burned when he spoke the word and their eyes were opened when he broke bread. Yeah, Kim, I'm with you. I, I feel like this is it's just surprising that Stephen Paul's meeting. Yeah, it's got people, such an issue with that. Yeah. And say no. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the same language. I mean, then it, you know, yeah. But I, where it preaches, if it is a reference to the Lord's Supper, is what does Jesus give us in our disorientation? He gives us his word and sacrament. <laughs> That's what we cling to. Uh, in the midst of all of our disappointments, um, you know, that's that's what we have to hold on to. Or that's our that becomes our road to Emmaus. Yeah, you know, that's kind of like what I was saying. Yeah, right? yeah. Like Sunday's my Emmaus, and then <clears throat> the rest of the week it's like Monday I wake up and I'm Monday like, through I'm like, through where Sunday, did go? Yeah, you know? Monday through Sunday is the road to Emmaus, uh -huh. and Sunday is Emmaus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, Kim. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I really like the verse 29 where it's stay with us for it is toward evening. The day is now far spent. Yeah. It reminds me of Holden evening vespers. Oh, okay. that's right. Yeah. Stay with us now for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter darkness and shine with your people here. Yeah, you almost start to sing it right there, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, we want, we want Jesus to stay with us. You know, they don't know it's Jesus, but they know something's special. Yeah. In looking in John in chapter 21, um, Jesus says, children, have ye any meat? Mm. Like, I mean, the same, same words as he said. Yeah. There on the shore to see a gallery. Yeah. 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 I, I think these stories of Jesus eating with the disciples, you know, 
again, even though there's some differences and details, just really, you know, points to, you know, this, and and there's there's hope in that too. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna experience a resurrection like his. So I I love the thought of you know we're not going to be these disembodied spirits floating around in the clouds or something you know <laughs> the resurrection is going to be a real you know new heaven and a new earth it's obviously beyond our comprehension but it's it's going to be tactile and, and real uh, well, yeah i mean there's going to be good food and it's going to be enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> but won't we all be vegetarian Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the lion and the lamb and all of that. Yeah. Um, as long as there's some good dressing, I'll be okay. Hummus. Hummus. hummus yeah. Pita. It's like, oh, good bread. With no problems. Yeah, it's barely hummus and pita. Yeah. Oh, that. yeah. Or like the Indian, what are, the, what are they called? The bread? The fried bread. Naan, yeah. Naan, yeah. Naan, yeah. Naan, yeah. Oh, I just love that. Uh, I can't eat much of it because it's, I don't know, but that bread that you get at the Indian restaurant down yeah. here, it's so, good. It's so good. That's my son's favorite place. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Well, he's been to India so many times, so many times. that he got used to eating yeah. the food, you know. Yeah, and in <clears throat> Ethiopia, they had a different kind of bread, but it was, was more spongy. But yeah, you didn't have utensils. You, yeah, you use got your these hands. big things of food, and everybody just dove mm -hmm. in. Man, there was some good food there. Uh, sorry, we're getting close to lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I wondered what Emmaus meant. You know, just what the word meant. Yeah, and um, it says that it might be. Uh, it might come from the Semitic word for warm spring or for so. Interesting that it would maybe be like, um, I don't know, maybe it's a stretch, but yeah, uh, 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 streams, a of, spa. Water, streams yeah, of water, yeah, right, right, like that, where the yeah, water, stream. where our thirst is quenched, mm -hmm. yeah, like going for a long hike, and then you get there and it's a spring. On that, I still remember the times I've been on really long hikes and we were praying we could find the spring that was on the map mm -hmm. and backpacking because we were out of water and and you, you, you make your way up this wash because it says on the topographical map there's a spring up, it's about a half, quarter mile up this wash and you get up there and it's like yes it was there oh yeah yeah there. and some of the best tasting water ever when you're really thirsty like that. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. So I, I got a couple more things and then we'll go to the Peter Pat, the, the supporting text. Um, I, I have this underlined in my ESV that there's something here about their eyes are kept from recognizing him. And then down below their eyes were open and then he opened to us the scriptures so uh their eyes were kept by who it doesn't say by the devil it doesn't say by some other person it seems to imply that god kept them from recognizing and that at first sounds like a well that's why would god do that you know what's what's the deal but i think that speaks to our our experience on the road to Emmaus, you know, uh, Monday through Sunday, we don't see God face to face. We, our eyes, you know, we, it's, it's not easy. And this is where we need the Lord to come or the preacher, which I don't mean a pastor necessarily. I mean, uh, a friend, uh, somebody to come and give us the promise, you know, um, and it promises, um, you know, that that he's there. Hey, Bob, come on in. Come on hey, in, partner. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So the fact that their eyes were kept 
you know, from recognizing that's a detail here that Luke, it's very important to Luke. And I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. Um, I kind of feel like it preaches that God is hidden. You know, we Luther talked a lot about the hiddenness of God uh, and that God is not going to be found outside of his word. He says, this, you know, this is where I'm going to find you now and not just, you know, out there in the old place. Um, so, so that's, that's, that could be a, that could be a sermon right there, you know, um, and then how is our, our eyes open? And stuff. It's weird though that he said they, they were opened after the bread, but they weren't opened after he interpreted the scriptures. Ah, their hearts burned, but they weren't. Their eyes were not opened. Oh, did our hearts burn with us while we talked on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? But that's right. And then down below, we get... In verse 31, is when their eyes are open after he... And their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And that was when he broke the bread okay. yeah so something was going on the word was doing something to him right but but the the breaking of the bread is you know yeah something yeah i like to say i like to do the fracture uh, of the bread afterwards and could reveal to us and i always say reveal to us re Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to us as you once revealed yourself to your disciples. Like, that's why I do it then, you know, because I don't do it. In the night in which Jesus betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want people to think like that's some kind of... Magical. Yeah, like, boom, you know, yeah, it happened. Bill's got the chunk. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Oh, okay. I see. I didn't understand what you were saying yesterday. I oh, yeah, that's what, that's what we were kind of talking yeah, about, Kim, I when need you to came in. Yeah, I back and look and see, because Jonathan yeah. probably did it after. Um, he, no, I think he, <laughs> he did. I think he did. He does not do that fracture. Like I say, I, I think typically he doesn't do any fracture. He just, you know, which is what we're all taught in seminary. Um, don't like although my Missouri Synod pastor is broke the you know but you're you're not supposed to do that because we don't take the wine and pour it out like <laughs> you know uh, you know so so why do you break the bread even though yes he broke bread but it's not like we're you know that's the magic okay, Catholic priests break the host and they put off a little quarter and drop it in the wine wine yeah exactly yeah yeah and so we want to stay away from that, see. But I also think it's kind of powerful to do it at some point. I just don't do it at that moment. <laughs> I put it off towards the end. and Because when they he broke the bread, they saw him. So I think there's some, I think you could make a case for doing it at the end there. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we've worked this Road to Maus text over pretty good. Why are you troubled and why do doubts? See, that is the word for doubts there. That's not opistus. That's the dialogismos, reasoning, thought. Why are you perplexed um, in your hearts? Um, why are you troubled? Yeah, disturbed, perplexed. Um, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. I love this phrase, and I know this goes beyond our text, but um, where does it say, and while they were disbelieving for joy? Jesus stood among them and said to them, peace to you, but... Uh, 41. 41. Yeah. And while they were still disbelieved, while they still disbelieved for joy. So it's kind of like too good to be true, you know. I can't believe it, you know. It's just so wonderful. 
he said to them, have you anything to eat? So he mm -hmm. seals the deal and has the food, has yeah. the fish. Makes me want to have a St. Peter's fish. Sea of Galilee. All right, well, shall we uh, check out the um, second reading? Or the actually the first reading. Um, here. Oh, here I am. Go to And says they disbelieve for joy. Disbelieve for joy, yeah. 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 I love that phrase. So it's Acts 2, 14a, and then um, we kind of skip the, the whole Old Testament stuff, just again, for time. But, it, Peter, but Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Um, and let's see. So 14a and then 22. So we we skip a little bit. We skip this stuff, but we got to read that anyway because this is man of Bible study. We don't skip stuff. Men, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this is where we pick up in our text. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up According to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. And God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it is not possible for him to be held by it. And then, so we get this whole Old Testament thing, and I realize right away here as I continue to read it, although it's really good we've read this because it puts the whole sermon in context. I was reading the second Sunday and not the third Sunday of Easter. <laughs> Our text is actually a little further down, um, Acts 14a, and then 36 through 41. So we did the 14a up here, obviously. So we're skipping some of the content, but what Peter does here is he walks through the whole Old Testament. He, he goes through, he preaches the Old Testament. Um, and then this, is this where we pick up? Hmm. I hope we didn't get this wrong in the, oh, maybe I tweaked the, I might have tweaked 36 through 41, third Sunday, 36. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. So 36 through 41. So let, let the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. So he's speaking to these folks and he tells them you crucified him. So let's pause there. Who crucified Jesus? We did. We did. Carrie's got the right answer. We did. Historically, uh, the Romans crucified him, but they did that at the behest of the religious leaders who stirred up the crowd. You know, so Peter, a lot, unfortunately, Christians not understanding at all what the cross is about, have blamed the Jewish people for killing Jesus. After all, they, they crucified Christ. Well, 
if it's only them that crucified Jesus, then the rest of us are still in our sins because, <laughs> you know, then he only took the Jewish people's sins. So no, we, we all crucified him. And that's what Peter, he preaches the law. We, our sin crucified Jesus. Um, now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And so what, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And that's where we stop for this week. Next, The next week we get the end of this sermon. So second, third, and fourth Sundays of Easter, we get the sermon of Peter. Um, what's the God, where's the gospel? Where's the gospel here? Yeah. Where's the good news? Bad news is that we all crucified Christ. The good news is what? Received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right, what? right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's Ace. He's got, must have a And the problem. promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So it's the forgiveness of sins. Notice that that's exactly what Jesus said this is all about, too, mm -hmm. in the Gospel of Luke. So, Luke, Acts, those two, those two volumes are very, very focused on including people that the average person thought were not included. Number one, Gentiles and sinners, but uh, women, centurion, it gets more specific, eunuch. There was a eunuch in Acts where they're riding along and he gets baptized. There were all kinds of people that were thought to be excluded from God's redemption that Luke makes sure we know were included. But that inclusion is the forgiveness of sins. That's what they're included to have. They get the gift too. That's not the gift. Including people is not the gospel. But the gospel is inclusive. The gospel's for everybody. But just getting everybody into the same tent is not the gospel. Like, you know, hey, we're, you know, <laughs> that's Unitarian. That's Universalist religion. You know, um, our gospel is completely inclusive of all people. But it is not the gospel. The gospel is forgiveness of sins. That's something our church struggles with today, because we want to be inclusive. But how is it that we're all included? It's the forgiveness of sins. That's the good news. It isn't because we've all done everything right or, you know, have the, all the right social statements or all the right positions on things. You know, once we get that right, everything. No, it, it's that we all need forgiveness and we all receive it. I love also this, um, maybe it's important to just remind some cool connections for the promise so notice you get the word um epangelia which is paul's favorite word to describe the new covenant it's a promise he doesn't use the word covenant so much so paul and luke like ross said you've got a connection there epangelia that is the gospel notice you know what repent okay so what should we do well repent and again, we've talked at, at not a ton about that, that repent is be sorry, and then be baptized, which is believing and receiving the gift. So repent, be sorry for your sin, and believe and be baptized, every one of you, because belief goes with baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. For what do you get? The forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now notice, it's a little bit ambiguous to me when I read this, that when you get baptized, the Holy Spirit is going to come. It doesn't say exactly when, and that's the cool thing in Acts. Sometimes the Holy Spirit comes before baptism, with baptism, sometimes after. You don't, nobody can pin the Holy Spirit down. 
But here it seems like, yeah, there's a promise you're going to receive the Holy Spirit in, in baptism. But notice all of that is summed up as what? Epangelia, a promise. It's like, that's, what, that's how we walk him on the road to Emmaus. It's like, and that's why when we get to Emmaus, we get the promise again to keep us going through Monday through Sunday. You know, that's, that's what we have. And then who is it for? This is the inclusive nature for your children and for all who are far off. It's for you and for your children and for all who are far off. This phrase far off is intriguing. Um, um, this is some cool little passages here, but there's there, there's some other beloved stories that you probably remember. Luke, t what's that? Prodigal. Prodigal son. The father sees the son far off. So, yes, it might have something to do with distance, <laughs> but where was the prodigal son? He was, if we, one interpretation of the story is that he had truly been humiliated and humbled, and now he's coming back, you know, just accept me <clears throat> as, you know, your slave. And so when the father sees him in that state, he runs to meet him. Now, in the prodigal son story, it appears to be, could be, he just was way out there. But now we get the same phrase to talk about people who are far off. So it's not just distance. There's one other spot that, that maybe anchors this. Can you think of what it might be? And it's in the Gospel of Luke. Um, it's a famous story where we hear about somebody being far off. Jesus is in the temple and he sees the Pharisee praying up there. Thank you, God, that I'm not like all these sinners and all these horrible people and what, you know, whatever it might be. And then he says, and then he says, look at that publican, that tax collector who's standing far off. So yes, he was, he was far off. He wasn't right there next to the Pharisee, but far off seems to be more than a word just about distance, but about your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that, that gets you missed the mark. You've missed the mark. Far. You're far off. You've really missed the mark. That's right, Mom. I love that. Yeah, because that's the word for sin. It actually means to miss the mark. And so, you know, the people who were, try as we might, we can't do it. Yeah. If we were playing darts, we'd be like, <laughs> we wouldn't even be on the board. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's far good. Off. That's good. So that's the far off part. When um, in Isaiah 2, it says that people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their hearts are far from me. And Matthew quotes that. Oh, wow. Or Jesus quotes it in Matthew. So maybe I've got something going here with this heart surgery sermon title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, the, what's the name of your sermon? I, I was going to title it Heart Surgery because you, got, you get cut to the heart, matters of the heart, you know, it, the, didn't our hearts burn within us? And then Jesus says, are you so slow of heart? So the problem is our heart mm -hmm. and getting that right. And so here, um, all who are far off, where, you know, you know. Your heart is a feeling organ. Yeah, right. Whereas your brain is, you got to think about everything. Yes, else. right, but right. It's more of a, what? Where do you, where do we find our, our Lord? Yeah. What passage was that, Kim, in Isaiah? Uh, it is Isaiah 29, 13. So I just want to see if that's 29, 13. Did you get that from a, 
Uh, no, I just remembered. You just 29. I remembered that it was in Isaiah somewhere, so I just looked it up. That one I may have to put up on the board. Their hearts are from, far from me. So, so God is after our heart. And how does it happen? You know? Yeah. Good. Okay. This is great stuff. So that was before. So was Isaiah 29 would be before exile, right? Yes. It would, although some, some of the, the critical scholars feel like there's little or little mess, little snippets from post-exile inserted into 1 through 39 but, but if you're thinking problem yes yes exile return. right it's I like know. their hearts are far mm -hmm. from me so you know they, they're they're giving me lip service mm -hmm. but you know i'm you know you don't fool god yeah well and then that's what the that's exactly what you said the publican the uh Pharisee was saying about the publican, right? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whose heart was far away. It was really the Pharisee. He was saying the publican's heart was far away. Yeah. But it was really the Pharisee's heart. Yeah, that's true. Because his heart was hardened, mm -hmm. you know, or puffed up. Or, yeah. Yeah. Do you know where that is? So right? actually being a far, being far away is a good thing. Because that means it, it, in this, in this sense, uh, might be it, you know in the, the sense oh the Pharisees and the publican I forget where that is um, that's okay. Luke um, yeah all right anything else well lovely study looking forward to talking about the road to Emmaus on Sunday and uh, we've got the orchestra and choir singing hallelujah hallelujah and we got the hallelujah chorus during the offering so that's awesome let me close this in prayer thank you god for this wonderful meal that we're gonna have in hearty meal but what we've had in your word because your word is um is a meal is the bread of life the food that sustains us so i pray indeed that this time will continue to be helpful and you'll continue to be with us in our disappointments hurts and losses that we have each and every day on our road to Emmaus and yet continue to give us Emmaus experiences um, where we have that promise renewed and so we pray all of this trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right, Mr. Ace. God bless you, my friend. Let me stop the stop the record share. And oop. Stop share. There we go. Um and stop the quick live stream all right and stop